more left in the tank. And also, even though he's maybe older than the rest of those guys, he has not been in any war fight that I can remember. The only one was Pacquiao, but other than that, he's been able to get through his fights just using his skills, so therefore he isn't as much worn and torn as the, as the other fighters are. He's younger in boxing years. The boxing years is much younger. Herrera and the guys around him has done a lot of big super fights. I'll tell you what, so far, Haka is taking to, making the fight a little more than anticipated. Marquez in the traditional Mexican colors. Haka in the red and blue. He is a southpaw. Marquez says no words for the last six fighters who he's faced have been southpaws. Now he gets a little nervous. He's got to go up against a conventional fighter. And there you see Marquez land a straight right. Marquez is fighting a lot more aggressive than he normally and punching with a lot more thought. He seems to be very determined to be impressive tonight. He does, but I'll tell you one thing. Haka has fast hands, and he's making Marquez's hands look a little slower, I think, than they normally look. Yeah, but Marquez is going for power tonight, I think, more so than Tech. Marquez got burned two fights ago. He lost a decision that more than a few observers thought he should have won in Indonesia against Chris John, who is undefeated. Manny mentioned he's going for power. As, as you mentioned earlier, friend, he even acknowledges he's looking for the KO tonight. He, I never heard him say something like that. Yeah, and he's got caught with a beautiful straight left right there by Haka. Haka doing work to the body. But Marquez spins him around and now goes to town in the corner. This could turn out to be a much more exciting fight than we all expected. Uh, it was a left hook from Marquez. Marquez and Haka trading blows, and we're just two minutes into the first round. You know, I thought that Haka was going to be more of a boxer looking at the films of him in the past, but he's seemingly trying to be a power puncher tonight, the same as Marquez. It means we have a good, exciting fight on our hands. Marquez doubles up with the left hand and unloads a right in a nice combination. He's fighting a fast southpaw from the Philippines, but this one doesn't hit like a ton of bricks as Pacquiao does. <laughs> nice stuff here in the opening round of a scheduled 12 rounder between Juan Manuel Marquez and Jim Rex Aka. Jim Rex is trying to land almost the same identical straight left through the center that Paco was so effective with when he fought Marquez. When we go to the corner of Paco, where they speak Tagalo, Ernie Kalug will translate, and when we go to the corner of Marquez, where they speak Spanish, you will hear the voice of Jerry O'Reilly. Gracias. You hit you on the side, eh? How's everything? Everything's doing well. Box them. Remember to box. Don't get carried away. I only need one second, so you need to get out. Don't get carried away. Right after Marquez had got caught with a good straight left from Haka, then he put Haka in the corner and started to unload it himself. Copy box numbers in round one. Marquez, 18, landing 18 out of 54. Haka, 18 out of 80. thought that replay was a great illustration of technically how good Marquez is. On offense, you saw it there, straight right hand. Excellent uppercut, left hook. There you see how Harold Letterman scored the first round, and he gave it to the youngster from the Philippines, Haka. This fight was supposed to take place just over a month ago. Haka had some visa problems. And in between now and then, he has joined Golden Boy Promotions. I respectfully disagree with with Harold, which doesn't often happen, I find, but I think that it was Marquez who did some of the hurting in that round. Although...
couldn't tell if Marquez just was off balance or if he got rocked. Seems to be steady on his feet now. Marquez is a, a wee tad slower than he normally is, I think, because he's trying to fight for power tonight. Normally he's a lot faster and a lot more elusive with his upper body movement. And the way he's fighting right now, this is anybody's fight because he himself got caught with a right hook, even though he might have been off balance. It could have been a facial knockdown still. He just landed a straight right. Nope. And, and also, Hawker just landed a left little <laughs> uppercut inside. There we go, That's man. <laughs> You know, going into this fight, it doesn't seem like this is the kind of fighter that would prepare you for Manny Pacquiao. And yet, Manny, it looks to me like Hawk was fighting similarly to Pacquiao in many respects. A little slower version, not as intense, not as fierce, but still definitely a version of Pacquiao. And main thing is not the punching power. There is a cut over the left eye, I believe, of Jim Rex Haka. All right in. And there you see what Marquez does so well. He leaned back and he counterpunched with his left. But Hawk has counterpunched him also sometimes when he comes in. By simply moving back, which is interesting because I thought he would be moving around a lot more, but Hawk is just taking a little step back sometimes, just enough to let Marquez miss. Over time, class tells. Let's see if it tells in this fight if Marquez can make adjustments and start to pull away. Marquez trying to end round two with a flurry. They will go to work on the cut of Jim Retzhaka in between rounds. Sit down, sit down. Two punches. One, two. What's your defense? What's your defense? You're doing real good. Real good. But be careful. Don't go in too carelessly. Here we said how could land a right hook as Marquez was coming in. And it, no, no, I'm sorry. It's a lot. And he lost his balance, but still it could have been con controversial knockdown if his gloves had touched the flow because he would not have went down without being hit. Agreed. This is just the second fight in the United States for Haka. The last one was pretty impressive against Geronimo Hernandez. It was a uh, first round TKO. He's fighting on the undercard of uh, Pacquiao Morales II. He's given Marquez a lot of problems because of the little step that he pulls back a lot, just enough to make Marquez get out of position himself. Instead of throwing punches and just staying there, he punches and then he pulls back just enough, like he does right there. Nice and wide left hook uh, shook Haka. Manny, I've heard you describe Tito Chidad in his prime as a killer robot. He figured out what he needed to do in the first few rounds and then he executed. And uh, Marquez throughout his career has reminded me of that. It's still early in the fight. Generally, he starts to dominate as the rounds go on. I don't know if he's going to be that effective. This guy seems to have his number here tonight. This kid is fighting a very intelligent fight. Very elusive up in his upper body right there. Very focused. And Marquez cannot get a good consistent rhythm going with any combinations. By Haka. But it was blocked with such force from Marquez that it, I think it did a little something. And I think Ditto on that one. Yeah. It was blocked, but there was some uh, pepper coming off that from Marquez. And I've seen Haka miss a little bit more in this round than he was earlier. Yeah, but one thing we know that once Haka slows down at all, Marquez is going to step it up, take it to another level.
I see Marquez not, applying a little more pressure here. He's not only that, but Hawker was always keeping that little distance between them. He's not that effective with it now, I think, because he's tiring a little bit. Well, he was always pulling back. Now Marquez is beginning to get his range now. Marquez showed you a little bit of the speed that he says he has left. He looks like a slower fighter to me than he did. He looks slower to me. I agree. He looks slower. He looks seasoned, very professional, but still slow. At least compared to this guy. Marquez starting to settle into the fight now. Haka unloads an uppercut. Haka's punch output slows down just a little bit. Marquez trying to steal another round with a flurry at the end. And the crowd here at Dodge Arena on its feet. How are you feeling? All right. Very nice, very nice. But wait, wait a bit. In the middle of the body. Relax. What's your head? What's your head? Jab. Use your uppercut. Do you use your combination. Use your hand. Check it out, check it out, let's go! There you see Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya. The two powers behind Golden Boy Promotions, who Marquez is now with. As is Jim Rex Kaga. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has to shoot the fight. Uh, okay, Fred. Two rounds to one. 29-28, Jim Rex Hacker. That, that first round was very, very close. Could have gone either way. I was really surprised at the style of Jim Rex Hacker. I mean, this is two guys standing there fighting on a dime. In any case, the second round, Hacker staggered him. I thought he won that. But round three, one man, one man, one mark has had his best round of the fight. Two to one, Hacker. not uncommon for Marquez to start slowly. It is uncommon to see him fight with this kind of passion. He seems to be not only fighting aggressively, but like he really is trying to take this guy's head off. Both fighters now opening up a little bit here in the fourth round. If he had matched this kind of passion in previous fights, he maybe then would have gotten the fights that he wanted to have. Or perhaps he wouldn't have won some of those fights and not been where he, you know, okay. not been as dominant as he was. All right, touche. But that's that's the um, the tightrope that Barrera has walked in recent years where he's become technical when he's needed the win and exciting when he was clearly better than the other but guy. But that's following a long career where he was explosive. Yes. Nice overhand right from Juan Manuel Marquez. Haka now uh, trying to lead with the left hand. Hawker doesn't have the punching power, Marquez, but he's fighting a very good fight, and thus far, this round, Simon is winning the round. Normally against Southpaw's Manny, guys are on guard for that straight left hand and don't see the right hook. Marquez seems to be caught with that straight left hand a little more than you'd anticipate. Yeah, I'm noting I'm really beginning to have a lot of second thoughts about the fight with Pacquiao because Pacquiao punches with a lot more speed and power than the Hawker. On the other hand, the fact that he looks vulnerable still, he is fighting a southpaw with a good straight left hand, and that's put him in kind of the, you know, he's active against a guy like that. Might that not be an advantage against Pacquiao in a, in a rematch? But what, what I'm just, what, what's, uh, I'm concerned about, Marquez seemed to have lost just a little step in his speed, mm -hmm. and you can't do that with a guy like Pacquiao.
pausa. Échame, échame. ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Estás bien? ¿Estás bien? Bien. Ganas el round, pero no te expones este percance. Si juegas el round, pero ten cuidado. No te vayas con tu cabeza. Ten cuidado con tu cabeza. Ten cuidado con tu cabeza. ¿Qué? Right here, you can see Hawker landing those short punches here. Not enough power on him, but still, he became a much busier fighter than he had been the last round. And as a result, he's probably back into the fight on the scorecard. Whether it's according to what Harold score or the official score, but I see it as a close competitive fight on the scorecards now. I think it's an even fight. And you saw. Uh, Hakka's a corner, Jose Reyes there, the cut man, uh, with that uh, cut under control over Hakka's left eye. In the fifth round of a scheduled 12 rounder here at Dodge Arena in Hidalgo, Texas, Fran Charles alongside Emmanuel Stewart and Max Kellerman. And this was supposed to be. A rebirth here for Juan Manuel Marquez. He's got his hands full. He does, but I'll tell you what, should he come out with a win here, I think this is more in his interest than it would have been to just chase a guy around for 12 rounds. So the opponent is fighting him perfectly, and especially if he's looking forward to fighting Pacquiao. He's got a watered-down version of Pacquiao right here in front of him. This is why some fighters don't watch tape, and... Haka says he doesn't watch tape of his opponents. Because maybe the guy on the tape isn't the guy you face. Box. Well, gamesmanship maybe there by Marquez. Haka, who wanted to make sure everything was all good. Marquez wouldn't touch gloves. And now there's a cut. Stop. Time. Neutral corner right there. Right there. Come Over on. the right eye, it's a gas. And it's, and it's bleeding. It's kind of spouting blood. I think it came from a punch shoot. Says it came from an accidental headbutt. Okay. Cut up, that's a very hard, uh, bad cut. When you get two heads bumped together, that's what happens when two skulls crash. The flesh in between gets busted. Very bad cut. I'll tell you what, if Harold's scorecard's right, that puts Marquez in some trouble. And Marquez, you can tell, sensing he doesn't want the fight to be in danger because of the cut. Going to work here in the fifth round. This is the fifth fight that we know of with Haka where headbutts have been an issue. We have not seen Marquez in his career except for the Pacquiao fight vulnerable. And that's, it's that kind of invulner, invulnerability that has made him perhaps less marketable than, say, Barrera, who seemed more human through the years. What now? Come back from a, from a, a, a bad cut over his eye. Down perhaps on points. Yeah, see what happens. To beat a guy, that will go a long way towards making him a more popular fighter. Marquez shot a big volley trying to, you know, get even after getting cut. And now that he's trying to take a little break, Hawk is trying to take control again. Blood streaming down the right side of Marquez's face. Dr. Miguel Duran will go to work on Marquez's cut. Damn headbutt. Is it okay? Don't worry about it. It's all right. I can't change the way they fight, though. I can't change that. Accidental. Bring your head up. All right, that's it. You should offer cut. You should want to combination. Watch your hand. Defense on the hand. Defense on the hand. 
Come on. Let's go. With the headbutt happening in the fifth round, an accident hunt headbutt. But the fight is stopped due to the headbutt. They will go to the scorecards to determine a winner. Power punches in round five. About even. Marquez landing 14 of 43. Haka 12 of 40. Nice right hand from Juan Manuel Marquez. Sometimes when fighters aren't good anymore, as good as they used to be, you find out if they're great. And Marquez, though he has some wins against guys like Derek Gaynor and Manuel Medina, has never had the signature win against a top guy. He drew with Pacquiao. He lost to Freddie Norwood, controversially. Rock Taka there with two rights. Some should he win dramatically here. That's something new in his portfolio, and I think raises his profile among the top fighters in this weight class. And he does seem to be fighting harder since the cut. And he's, to me, landed more punches in the fight, clean punches, than Hata. But Haka still seems to be so relaxed and seems to be very comfortable with the situation and has been able to take all of the power shots from Mark Hayes which means that it could be a tough fight for Marquez as it goes down the stretch. Well, it wouldn't be a dramatic win if it wasn't against a determined guy. Yeah, Marquez is fighting very determined. I'm very impressed with that. But I'm also equally impressed with this young guy who seems to be unawed about this pro-Mexican crowd, who in particular they're excited about what, after what happened with Pacquiao in the Mexican last week. I mean, showing some maturity, man. A lot of maturity, yeah. It really is. He's getting hit, and it doesn't seem to be taking the fight out of him. Pockets. Manny, it was only a couple of weeks ago where your fighter, Vladimir Klitschko, he suffered a cut, and we saw his pace pick up a little bit. Yeah, but that's what, that's what good fighters do. When you tell them to pick it up, at least they go out and they try to. And I think Marquez has tried to do the same thing. Good right hand. Good right hand. Marquez landing flush upstairs on Jim Rex Haka. Very determined fighter. Now, I like what Marquez is doing. He used to throw that long one-two, and Hopper was getting out of the way of it, but now he's just getting close to shooting a right-hand lead off the bat now instead of the one-two. And he's been more effective. There it is again. By shooting the right hand without shooting the left, he's been more effective, and Hopper can't time it. The blood streaming down on the right side of Marquez's face. You see him wiping it off. In between, firing big shots. Well, it's safe to say not what we expected halfway through the bout. Definitely not what I expected. A pleasant surprise. That's right. It's a much better fight than I expected. You're doing good. You're okay. Don't worry about it. Mark Vaseline, how are you feeling? Here we see the head button that caused the, the, the bad cut right there. You see the blood coming in immediately right after the head's clash. And Manny, not unusual. You have a conventional fighter taking on a softball and Second fighters time. trying to get in. And it, yeah, this, this, a lot of things are totally different and unexpected to me in this particular fight. You know, Marquez's Sunday punch is his left hook, and he has not been able to land that very cleanly very often. It's no. a straight right hand, and maybe that's one of the reasons Haka's still around this late in the fight, despite the fast pace. All right, we are through six rounds. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Fred, 58, 56, one man, one well, Marquez. Fred, I gotta tell you, I think this kid's won four rounds in a row. I'm talking about Marquez. Even with the bleeding, even with the blood going in his eye, he's laying a great right hand and he's winning these rounds. But I wanna say something. You were right about we go to the scorecards after the fourth round, the case, you know, the fight is stopped by that cut. But I gotta say this, if the fight is stopped in the middle of the round, you score the partial round. So therefore, you gotta start fast in every round, make sure you don't lose the first half, because you gotta score that partial round. Four to two, Marquez. Marquez catches Haka with a left uppercut. 
Parker has a good chin. That's the only reason he hasn't been knocked out because Marquez is coming in with good punches. And Marquez punches good with both hands. Even though he punches good with the left hook, he has a good right hand. But Haka just takes a good punch. Not only is this the kind of fight that will endear Marquez to the fans, but maybe it will make other top fighters think that he's more vulnerable than he used to be and therefore make it easier to make some of those top fights. Well, that is truly the case, I believe. I think he's, he gets hit a little bit more than he used to, but he's fighting a lot more, too. Haka yeah. momentarily there uh, thought he got hit low. Lawrence Paul was having it. If it was, it was a straight punch on the bed line, so it means that maybe mentally he's starting to fall apart a little bit. But there was nothing serious about the low blow. Oh, nice uppercut by Marquez, and then he does a nice job of stepping back to get some separation, and he comes back with a left. I mean, for Marquez, he just landed a right uppercut right. from the outside against a world-class southpaw. Yeah, That's and, so, I mean, and, how do you do something like and that? And no punch has wobbled this boy Hawker yet still. He's been here with some tremendous shots, but none of the punches have caused him to get in any trouble. Manuel Marquez, as I mentioned, he lost two fights ago. Unanimous decision to Chris John in Indonesia. He counterpunched his way through that fight, even though he thought he won it. In his last fight against Turtsak Chandang, we saw this type of effort from Marquez. He's fighting a very good, exciting, power-punching fight tonight. And very determined. The fight was stopped in the seventh with Marquez winning. Marquez, the Norwood fight, most people thought he won. He lost the decision. The Chris John fight also, most people thought he won. I thought both fights were very close. But in Marquez's mind, he's an undefeated fighter. Eight rounds, eight rounds. You should time it. This is where you gotta dig in, baby. You gotta dig in, all right? All right. Okay. Second time. Juan Manuel Marquez comes right out in the beginning of the eighth round and lands a left hook. Haka's getting the biggest payday of his career, as you mentioned, Max, $50,000. He says he plans on going back to the Philippines. He wants to build a house. He has a wife. He can build a couple in the Philippines with 50 grand. He looks like a million bucks tonight, though, considering the level of opposition. He's really fighting a spirited, inspired kind of fight. He says he has no other hobbies. A boxing is it. It should be said also as we watch Marquez and you think about Pacquiao. People are talking about Barrera in a rematch with Pacquiao. Barrera got knocked out in five rounds. Marquez drew in a fight I actually thought he won. Many people did. He didn't lose to Pacquiao. He drew. It was two and a half years ago, though. Yeah, right. but since then, you know, Barrera got blitzed. Right there, Morales got blitzed twice. The second bite. You okay? Okay? The second bite. Okay? The second bite. What is it? Come in! Box! All right, Lawrence Paul letting us know the second accidental headbutt and you can see once again Marquez wants to take matters into his own hands Haka standing right there with him going toe to toe but Haka came right to him and he sure did. Uh, met him punch for punch what an exchange 
What a great exchange. And, you know, Hopkins going right to him. He's not taking it easy. Both guys are meeting each other head on. Blood streaming down his face, Fred. Down Mar uh, Marquez's face in a furious exchange with a determined and contender. If, if they go to a scorecard, based on what I'm seeing, Marquez still could win the fight, possibly. Well, he's not trying to win on the scorecard. No, they're going for the knockout, both guys. Marquez sensing the danger with the cuts. Blood now covering the right side of his face. Right there. Come here. Come on. Come on, Wani. You have that? How many guys? You're ahead on the scorecard. Okay? When you see, when you see, how many people do I got? Go on up. All right. Hang on. Time in. It's a little odd there. Lawrence Cole telling yeah. uh, Marquez he was ahead on the scorecard. Definitely odd. I'm uh, very sad about it. I don't recall ever hearing it. He's basically telling him, he, it sounds as though he's implying if you decide you don't want to fight on because of the cut, you're going to win. And Marquez, to his credit, wants to fight on. That's no small thing, folks. His face is ripped open, well, how, and he wants to fight on. How could Lawrence Cole have any idea what That's the scorecard said? I don't know how he can know, and if he did know, it's very unusual. It seemed like out of order for him to tell the one of the boxers that is, but... Well, they're talking about open scoring in fights, guys, and that's the kind of stuff that would happen in an open scoring system. Guys would quit if they were ahead. Come on, you've got to attack his body. Attack his body. If not, it's going to be more difficult. Tell the referee about the head, but... I can't change the other guy's style. He's not doing it on purpose. It's Akira. I can't take points away. It's accidental. I cannot take points away. Yeah, you see another head button, but I don't think none of them was an intentional, it was just the style of the two fighters. The way that the heads keep clashing. Well, you heard Lawrence Cole say, I can't take another point away because he's doing it accidentally. It's just his style. Marquez with a 25 to 9 advantage in power punches in the eighth round and 30 to 17 overall. It, when a southpaw fights an orthodox fighter, it's gonna that happen. happens. There's, there are going to be headbutts. By the way, I said. Fighters would quit in an open scoring system. There are, there are pros and cons to open scoring. That is a potential con that fighters with less heart than Marquez quit knowing they were ahead in the fight. And a lot of fighters, once they realize that they are comfortable here on points, they would just actually run the rest of the fight, even if there's no cut involved, just on points, which is what you see a lot in international amateur boxing, which makes it so boring now. Once a guy finds out he's 7 2 ahead, he says, Oh, I got three more rounds to go, I just run. It's, to Marquez's credit, he's not looking just to win, but to win in a way that will kind of tip the scale away from Barrera and towards him in terms of public demand for a Pacquiao fight. And he's got four more rounds to go altogether. Just the fight is still just a third of the way to get still left to go. That's a long time when you're bleeding like that. And the guys, uh, a point that was just brought to my attention from the truck, Marquez may not have even known what Lawrence Cole was saying. He may not have understood him. Good point. See Hoppin wanting to take advantage of the situation. Marquez's corner doing a nice job on that cut because it is uh, hardly as much of an issue, the blood that is as it was in round eight. Really nice job, you're right. Uh, Nacho Bernstein happens to be his trainer, vet man, and manager. Doing know, it all, huh? And has been his manager since he was a kid. I guess when he was about eight or nine years old, he's been always the, the boxing guy in his life, for he and his brother Raw. 
Rafael. Rafael. Haka now trying to do some work against the ropes, and he comes back with a strong left hook to the body. Oh, big left hook by Mark He doubled up, and it floors Haka. Surprise. I don't think Haka knows where he is quite. No, he probably didn't see the punch. But it seemed like he was aware, but just totally just confused. That's his Sunday punch, Manny. The left hook. When he catches you with the hook clean, you gotta go. Great, great victory for Marquez. Jim Rex Haka seemingly was taking everything that Juan Manuel Marquez had to offer until he got caught with a double left hook. Well, out for this victory, I would love to see Marquez get a super fight with Pacquiao. Win or lose, he deserves it. Has he tipped the scales for you away from Barrera and towards himself for the next guy for Pacquiao to fight, Manny? He has, he well, has for me. I think because of the drama of this fight compared to Barrera's last victory, the public would probably want to see Marquez now more so than Barrera, which I wanted at first. And there you see the knockout right there. And watch it with the left hand from Marquez. Doubles up, and it was the second one that put Haka on his seat, and he didn't move from that point on. You might be wondering, why isn't he trying to get up? I think it's a case of him just being not knowing where he is. I'm still confused. I cannot figure that out. Seems like he's aware. Yeah, he's, he's not really hurt that much. The fact that he's setting up, not on his back. But nevertheless, he was knocked out. He did. He looked. He looked cognizant of what was going on, but sometimes a fighter can look that way and still be totally dazed and confused. That's what we want to see as fight fans. His face torn open against a young, determined, fast guy who's not scared of him. Lupe Contreras is ready, Max, with the official particulars. This bout comes to an end with an official time of two minutes, 48 seconds of the ninth round. Your winner, by way of knockout and still, WBO interim featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez. Juan Manuel Marquez gets a knockout in the ninth round against a young, tough customer from the Philippines. But tonight was Marquez's moment, almost a, a coming out party for a guy, Manny, who had a great fight against Manny Pacquiao a couple years ago and seemingly was looking to duplicate that feat. All right. Final copy box punch stat numbers on the night for the fight between Marquez and Haka. And there you see Haka was busy, stayed in there, hung tough through 16 more punches, but Marquez landing 50 more total punches, landing at a connect percentage of 36%. And here you see the damage that Marquez.